Canada seems to have doubled down on its provocations against India. The Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, is going all guns blazing against India in a bid to desperately appease to a particular vote bank and also in a bid to desperately save his chair. He was asked whether he's going to run for a fourth term next year and he said, we, in French, saying that yes, he intends to run for a fourth term. And the only way, because currently he's trailing in the polls by 20 points, if elections were to be held in Canada today, Justin Trudeau will lose whatever the equivalent of losing your deposit is in Canadian elections, that'll be his state. He will not finish number two. He might finish number three, possibly even number four. That is how unpopular he is in Canada right now. So therefore, three days after he accused the Indian High Commissioner of being a person of interest in a murder investigation, there is not an iota of evidence that's been provided by the Trudeau government. But back home, trouble has been mounting for Trudeau. He's been exposed by one of his own just weeks before India-Canada ties took a nosedive. The Canadian Security Intelligence Service, which is their equivalent of the RAW or IB, the director of the CSIS, Vanessa Lloyd, has acknowledged that Pakistan played a role in influencing the country's politics and backing Khalistanis. That video has come out at a time when Canada's state broadcaster has given an open platform to a Khalistani separatist, somebody who's a designated terrorist here in India, Gurpatpan Singh Panu, to spew hate openly, not just against India. That is just one part of the problem. He is spewing hate against Canadians, against Indo-Canadians, against Hindu Canadians, saying that all Hindu Canadians need to be thrown out of Canada. Is that acceptable to Mr. Trudeau, who's been waxing eloquent about protection of all Canadian citizens? Is that acceptable to Pierre Polivier, the Conservative leader who hopes to be the Prime Minister next year? Is it acceptable to Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, who just two days back said, the priority for any Canadian leader should be the safety and security of Canadian nationals. And here is a man saying that Hindu Canadians, Canadian citizens, need to be thrown out. Is that acceptable? Let's listen in. I think, Commissioner, what I would add there is the, um, the context that engagement of Pakistan is... is consistently in balance with trying to reduce the influence of India. Influence of Pakistan is directly related to support of Khalistani extremists. All right, Ambassador Dogra is still with us. Ambassador Dogra, how does India now deal with this diplomatically? You have the equivalent of the raw chief or the IB chief openly admitting that Pakistan has played a role in influencing the whole Khalistan movement and they are playing a role in influencing the Khalistani elements in Canada. How does India counter this? You just heard what Mona Alam said. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is going to be Pakistan's official attack line from here on out. That it, Look, it's not just we who are talking about Indian agents involved in Balochistan and in you know, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. It is the Canadians who are saying this. How is India going to counter it? Well, we have a big problem on hand. And the problem is one of public perception. Uh, public perception internationally. Pakistan, we could deal with. Pakistan, we could ignore. Pakistan, we could handle on our own. But that is a separate thing. Let me also add that Pakistan has its tentacles in the West in the most widest possible sense, as the intelligence chief of Canada has said. And as I can give chapter and verse on uh, ISI's trade in England, Italy, and Germany. But that's, let's, let's not get trapped into that discussion. The principal thing is, what does India do with Canada, with a problem called Canada? Because Canada is not alone. Canada yep. started all this with the knowledge and backing of USA. Why USA is doing this? Especially at a time when our relations were on the peak, going yep. further up. Uh, that that uh, is either the way USA deals with its friends and allies or there is some kind of momentary madness which has struck its advisors. That's, that's again a separate thing. But five eyes getting together because one of the eyes has felt that we must get India because of our internal political reasons, as you said very rightly. Trudeau is dependent on certain Sikh segments uh, for his uh, election victory or for, for some kind of a chance in elections. Mm. Now, another thing I want to correct is that out of 700 Sikhs in Canada, 
I would say 650 Sikhs are Indians. They are as Indians as any other, whether it's an Indian Hindu, Christian, Muslim, or whatever. They are Indians, and they would be under threat from these 50, 60,000 yeah. radical elements. And that is what Pannu is encouraging. So Canada could have a bloodbath on the streets if it does not control the likes of Pannu and other Sikh extremists. You know, I just want to put that into perspective for our viewers. There are 700,000 Sikh Canadians in, in Canada. Uh, a large majority of them, 90, 95% of them are peace-loving. They don't believe in this old chimera called Khalistan. There's a very tiny micro-minority who thinks that. Two, you compare that to the three and a half, almost four million Indo-Canadians, then the fact that the likes of a Jagmeet Singh or a Trudeau or other mainstream politicians in Canada are putting the lives of that three and a half, four million people at risk because they want to appease to 30, 40, 50,000 Khalistanis. I mean, it just beggars belief. But anyway, thank you very much, Ambassador Dogra, for joining us. Uh, the concern, and I think I would absolutely second what Ambassador Dogra said, it's not just Canada. India can afford not to take Canada seriously. I mean, the trade with Canada is about $8 billion. It, it won't be a pinch at all. But the fact that 10 Downing Street has put out a statement supporting Canada, the fact that the U.S. State Department seemingly is supporting Canada, the New Zealand Prime Minister has been spoken to, he's also put out a supportive statement, so has the Australian Prime Minister, all because of the Five Eyes Alliance, trying to corner, trying to gang up against India. India needs to have a better strategy, a multi-pronged strategy to take this head on. Uh, whether or not that will come to fruition, we'll wait and see. We will keep an eye out on.